Pain correction, a different perspective. Hi, I'm Ivan LaCroix, and this is the Detailers Business Academy, where we strive to take you from detailer to entrepreneur. If you have any questions, comments, thoughts, or ideas, please leave them below. And if you can, subscribe and maybe even hit that notification bell. Pain correction. It's something we all love to do. Taking that beat, battered, scratched up surface and making it like a mirror. Making it look as good as it possibly can. Even striving for perfection. Now when we're doing that, it is great for our ego. Is it great for the customer? Sure, they're getting a perfect surface. But do they need a perfect surface? Do they want a perfect surface? Do they deserve a perfect surface? Hmm, not sure. Now, why are we even striving for a perfect surface? Well, it's because we want that. We're detailers. We want perfection. It's what we aim for. It's what we strive for. It's what we do. But our customer... Do they want perfection? No. They want clean, shiny scratches. Yes, I said it. They want scratches. Why? Because a few reasons. First of all, how many times have you heard a showroom finish? It's as good as new. We've all seen new cars. They're not to a detailer's level. Never have been, never will be. They've been on a truck. They've been on a train. They've been through many hands. They've seen brushes. They've seen lot washers. They've seen all sorts of things. They're not perfect. But every day, people drive away from dealerships with brand new cars, thinking that this is the best their paint will ever be. And they're happy with it. Yes, that's the thing. They're extremely happy with it. As detailers, we have a little disease. Our eyes see things that to other people don't exist. We're driving around town and we stop at a light. As detailers, we see a red car with rids. Random isolated deep scratches, just for those who don't follow. We see a white car that needs iron remover. And we see a black car that desperately needs polishing. Normal human beings stop at that same light and see a red Volkswagen, a white Ford, and a black Chevy. Yeah, that's what they see. They don't see what we see. And as detailers, that's a good thing. And it's also a bad thing. It's a bad thing because once you see it, you can't unsee it. So don't show it to your customers. Don't give them our disease. Come on, be kind to your customers. Ask your customer instead, why are you here? What is it you're wanting from this detail? And then your customer will point out some scratches that you may not have noticed. And the scratches you notice your customer won't point out because the one they're pointing out is the one their wife made with their purse. The one you're seeing and they're not pointing out is the one they made with their golf clubs. And they don't care about that one because they made it and yeah, they, want, they don't want to admit that. Meanwhile, the one that the wife made on the bottom of the rocker panel is annoying the living daylights out of them because they didn't make it themselves. It's like that. So ask your customer, why are you here? And you'll find out your customer doesn't see the swirls you're seeing on the paint. Your customer doesn't see all the things that you see. And in doing so, it makes your job easier. Now, when we had our shops, the one shop in particular had a, another detailing shop less than a kilometer away. Half a mile for you Americans. And that shop had been in business for 30 years. They did a wonderful job, but they started every estimate with, we're going to be doing a three-stage cut and buff. I told you, they've been around for 30 years. Old take, old terminology. They didn't use the term paint correction. But they're doing a three-stage cut and buff. And they're striving for perfection. They're taking eight hours to polish that car, every single car. Do they have good results? Yeah, they had great results. Were the customers happy? Yes, customers were happy. But... Were the customers getting what they wanted? No. The customers were getting what that detailer wanted. Now, the same customer would come to us, and we would explain paint correction in a completely different light. We called it paint preservation. Paint enhancement, not correction. And as detailers, 
we're working with a finite resource. The paint on a vehicle, generally speaking, and I'm just using general numbers here, it's 100 microns thick. And by the way, when you're dealing with a customer, deal in microns, not in mils. 4.6 mils is hard to understand. It's a number, but it's an odd sort of number. Whereas 100 microns, oh, 100, that's something they can quantify in their head. Now we explain to the customer that the clear coat on that paint is only 50 microns thick. So those scratches that you have in your paint, how deep are they? Do we know? No. As detailers, we don't know. The customer sure as heck doesn't know. But we do know that if we remove that scratch, we're removing a lot of paint, or a clear coat in this case. And shout out to a few people that have taken my class before that pointed something out to me that I agree with, actually. Uh, we call it paint correction. We should actually be calling it clear coat correction. That being said, so you have a scratch. You remove that scratch. Let's say that scratch was 30 microns deep. So for an area that is four or five inches wide, however long the scratch was, you have now gouged into that clear coat 30 microns. And those 30 microns will never come back, even if you're putting a coating on it. Paint or clear coat doesn't like being polished, doesn't like being corrected, sure as heck doesn't like being compounded. Why? Because you're removing it. Yes, you're removing it. You're not moving it from point A to point B. You're removing it. You're taking it away. If you've ever polished single stage paint, you know that your pad gets contaminated or full of that paint immediately. And you're removing it. You're doing exactly the same with clear coat. It's just you don't see it because, well, it's clear. So you've removed that scratch. You've taken 30 microns away. What happens the next time a customer gets a scratch in that same area? Yeah, you're now through the paint and, or through the clear coat and into the paint. Not a good situation. Not for you, not for the customer. Good for the body shop that you're going to pay to fix it. But other than that, not a good situation. Now, if we talk about paint preservation, if we talk about making shiny scratches, yes, making shiny scratches. How do we go about that? Well, first of all, we educate the customer. And by educating the customer, I don't mean pointing out every swirl and defect in their paint. They don't care. Sorry to break your heart there, but they really don't care. You're going to spend hours polishing a car, and next week, they're going to take it through the car wash. Yep. Or they're going to wash it at home with a single bucket, dish soap, and use their father's leather chamois that he gave them 20 years ago and that he used for 30 years. It's a little worn and battered. Yes, your customer will do that to all your great work. You strive to make it perfect. They're going to ruin it once again. Now, as detailers, we need to remember the scratches on the paint are not our fault. We didn't put them there. The customer did. And the customer for the most part, doesn't really see them. And I know some of you at this point are going, my customers see everything. My customers, yes. I've been all over the world teaching. And in every country I've been to, in every province, in every state, they say, oh, our customers here are different. Your customers are not different. They're the same everywhere. Trust me, been there, done that. Unless you point out all these things to your customers, they won't see them. So don't point them out. Ask your customer what they want. Now, paint preservation. We're going to be polishing the paint lightly. Our goal is to deoxidize the paint. Our goal is to round over the scratches. And when you round over the corners of the scratches, they become a lot less apparent. Now, in the proper light, yeah, they're still going to be there. And speaking of lights, you know, we're using really high-powered lights these days. When I started detailing, we would polish the car, back it out into the sun, look at it and go, wow, we did a great job. We had nothing else. Yeah, we had bulbs hanging in the shop that, yeah, provided a bit of light. But if we wanted to see the truth, we brought it outside. And our customers still are seeing their cars outside to this day. Not many customers are walking around with high-powered LEDs. 
Now, we evolved as detailers. We got the Brinkman dual light. Yes, the swirl finding light. That was an upgrade. Then those of us that had the budget bought a 3M sun gun. Oh, now we could see even more scratches. Then we got these beautiful LED lights. Well, we see scratches that unless you have that light, we don't see. Next, you know, we're gonna see someone with a 747 landing light in their shop looking for scratches. No, your customer doesn't have those lights. And again, let me stress this, your customer doesn't care. Your customer wants clean, shiny scratches. And we're not gonna leave the paint looking like crap. We're gonna make it a lot better. We're gonna make it shiny. We're gonna make it smooth. And we're gonna round over those corners. Now in doing so, we're taking a lot less time. And we're preserving that paint. Think of paint preservation instead of paint correction. Now by preserving as much of that factory clear coat as we can, that customer will be able to get it polished again and again and again and again. But if we go at it with sandpaper, compound, polish, 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 we're taking so much away that the next time you polish it, no, you might burn through. Not a happy situation for you. Not happy for the customer, but again, really happy for the body shop. And most of us have had this happen to us. We start polishing in the car and it's rock hard. Nothing's moving. We keep polishing, we keep polishing, we compound, we sand, we do everything. And at the end, you look at the paint and it scratches. You look at the paint and it mars because you've removed that top layer. And that top layer on the paint is a hardened layer. Think of it as case hardening if you're into metalworking. What that hardened layer is, is certain components floating to the top of the clear coat as it's curing. So as the solvents are evaporating out of it, they're carrying to the surface hardeners. Sometimes it's melamine, sometimes it's ceramics, doesn't really matter what it is. It's going to that surface and they settle in the top five to 10 microns of the paint. Once we go through that top five to 10 microns of the clear coat, well, we're in for it. Yeah, now that paint has become so soft that you breathe on it and it scratches and you're never going to get it back. Even if you put a ceramic coating on it, it's never going to be like before. So we don't want to polish as much as we like to. As detailers, we tend to over polish things. And in reality, we're not helping the customer. We're ruining their car. We're destroying their paint by correcting it. How are we destroying their paint? We're taking too much away. By taking too much away, we're making it soft and we're making it more susceptible to damage. So the next time you go to put a polisher to the paint, think about what you're doing. Are you really helping the customer by making it perfect? Probably not. Are you flattering your ego? <laughs> yeah, definitely, yeah. Are you gonna post pictures online and say, look what I did? Probably. Are your customers gonna care that you have the accolades of your fellow detailers? No. They're gonna care what their car looks like, how much they paid you, and how long is it gonna last? And lasting, well, the more you polished, less chance that beautiful finish is gonna last because the customer won't take care of it like you would. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, comments, thoughts, or ideas, leave them below. And stay tuned for the next one. Thanks.